Hello, so this week is going to be a little bit different because it's such a hot week that it's far too hot in my upstairs studio to be painting. So what I realised also is that I'm almost out of my light colour watercolour paints. So today I'm going to show you how I mix my pigment, natural pigment, into watercolour. So um, I'll show you everything that you need and let's get on. So, you'll need your pigment, which in this case is a calcified moss, which is known as tuffa, which I obtained from a fantastic little cottage, which is actually built from tuffa stone. You'll need a binder, which in this case is just gum arabic dissolved in water. You'll need some essential oil. Clove oil is the one I'm using and a couple of drops of that per tub of paint will stop it from gathering mould and becoming mouldy. You'll need some spatulas, a glass board. This is literally just a glass chopping board but you could use any glass frame or you could use a sheet of uh, marble kitchen top if you have that. Something that you can clean easily and something that won't get really scratched. And the last thing you need is something to grind your paint or something to mix your paint. Um, you can use a special glass muller or you could use an actual glass with a flat bottom. And in this case I'm using an old hot iron which is I got from an antique shop and this works perfectly for me. First of all, make sure your chopping board is clean and then just scoop out some of your pigment. Now this has already been double ground, so I ground it to start off when I was making it and then once the pigment had dried into the pigment, I ground it again in a pestle and mortar. So it's quite fine. And just make a little hole in the center and then add some drops of your binder. Now because this is already mixed with water, I don't need to add any more water and then just give it a little mix so we've mixed all the binder into the powder it's actually quite dark I'm intrigued to see what colour it will become when it's on paper once it dries out again. And then all you do, and you can always add a little bit more powder or more binder as needed, and then you just mull. So you can do it in circular patterns or figure of eights, and what you're looking for is a change in consistency. The muller will gradually grind the particles a little bit finer and it will ensure that they're all equally coated in the pigment so you'll get a much better quality paint. This can take some time so I'm going to pause the video and come back a little bit later. But again, you will periodically need to keep scraping your paint back into the centre because it will work its way out to the side. So that's what another use for your spatula. And you can take as much off here as you can. Just work it back into the centre and then carry on grinding until it becomes lovely and smooth and it will kind of change consistency a little. We're nearly at the end. How long you grind for really depends on what the consistency that you want your paint and it also depends on the natural pigment that you're using. You'll find that some natural pigments kind of take to becoming a paint really really well and some others do not really like it at all. 
and sometimes you might find that you need to change your binder. Some work better as a watercolour and some work better as an oil. Uh, pigments with very fine particles like charcoal powder can take up to an hour to grind. So if you don't mind grinding your paint for an hour, <laughs> then feel free to use charcoal. I have done it and I have got a good paint out of it, but it was a lot of work to get the pigment to mix well. But this one is lovely. It's become nice and creamy. You can hear that it stopped grinding quite so much, which means it's mixed really well and any thicker particles have been ground down a bit more or mould <laughs> as the correct term is. So now you need a little pot or something to put your paint in which was something I forgot to say in the beginning. So I found this gorgeous little pot which was actually a solid perfume and I've had it for years and years and years and never used the perfume and it had lost its smell. So rather than throw the whole thing away, I cleaned out what was left of the perfume. I'm going to use it to put this paint in. So scrape all of the paint off your muller. And then gather it all together. your little pot. And then all you need to do is leave it to dry out. And once it's completely dried out, you can then put the lid on and use it as a watercolour. You could use it straight away if you wanted to. If you wanted to have a really fast drying time, you could add a little drop of vegetable glycerin, which helps the paint to dry out quicker as a watercolour. But I found that last time I did that, I'd probably put too much vegetable glycerin in and it uh, made the paint dry out too much. Once you've gathered, it fills your pot. Now, obviously, I'm just making enough for me to use at any one time. If you can make a large batch if you wanted to and fill lots of pots, depending on how much pigment you have. But that is the process of grinding, of mulling the paint into a watercolour. Now, if you don't want to use watercolour, you do exactly the same with oil. You could use walnut oil or linseed oil are the best ones to use. It's exactly the same process, but what you'll need to do is put it into something which where it will not dry out. So instead of leaving it to dry out as you would do a watercolour with an oil, you don't want it to dry out. So you need to put it into something that is foil. You can actually buy empty foil tubes to put watercolour paint in, or you could use some old foil pots that like you get from cakes and uh, I tend to save all those little foil tins and you can put your water cup, your foil paint into the centre of them and just kind of fold them up around the edges and if you keep them in the fridge they'll last even longer. So let me see your results if you have a go at making this paint I'd love to know. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.